you know, my first question is simply, what's it like making one of the best Canadian genre films ever? <laughs> I mean, for both of you, because it's, it is incredible what you've, you've created. Oh my goodness, uh, thank you for the compliment. I don't think we set out to do that. <laughs> um, I just wanted to tell a story um, that I started writing you know, many years ago at this point in 2013, and I wanted to explore the impacts of colonial policies on Indigenous families. And I wanted to do that in a way that, um, that I thought would open up some freedom, but also offer a layer of protection. Um, and so I was really excited about bringing this story into the future and into the genre space. And I love too that it crosses genres because it's not it's not easy to peg it down to one genre. It really crosses a few. Um, speaking to that, did you have that intention early on? Because there is, you know, there's certainly sci-fi, but there's there's a lot else going on there. Yeah, it's been called a lot of different things. Some people call it sci-fi. Some people call it speculative or dystopian fiction. Right. Some people call it a thriller. Um, it's got a little bit of action. Yeah. So yeah, it, it is a bit hard to pin down. And then of course, it's an indigenous film, you know, and I've been a part of the indigenous screen community for many years. And to me, it's like the ground and the my second family. Mm. And it really has given me the strength to try to tell such like a big story on such a scale like this. As an actor coming into a world like this that has so much to it, you know, what what do you first think coming into this character, I guess? Oh man, it was uh, <laughs> it was such an honor to play Niska. Um, I've known Dennis for quite a few years now, and she's been really instrumental in helping me build my career as a filmmaker. <laughs> um, and I knew she'd been working on this for a while. And so when I got the call to audition, I was just like so excited to ha even have the opportunity to audition for it. Um, and I really didn't think I would get it. <laughs> and then I did. Uh, <laughs> um, and it was truly an incredible experience because Niska is so many Indigenous women that I know. Um, her story is so close to home, I think, for all of us. Um, and so there was just this immense responsibility of, of doing her story justice. And um, yeah, Dennis did such an incredible job of creating like a safe, nurturing environment on set where, where we were able to tell this difficult story and, mm. and make brave choices. And um, yeah, it was just really cool. <laughs> and I love her journey because there's, there's a lot of films that would go for the thriller mood that would have a cut and dry hero's you know, role, but she has, she has a lot of questions early on and I like her discovery. Did you, how do you find the space to create that, I guess, to, to start out wondering and going into the, the actual, like, the heart of it? Well, I think she's so relatable in the sense that, like, Indigenous people in this country have experienced generations of, of colonial violence and, and that violence is um, embodied in many ways for us and, and the, the um, legacy of that violence is manifested in, in so many aspects of our identity. Um, and what I like about Niska is that she, she, is, she is someone who has lived with that violence and we see that violence in, in um, the way that she relates to the world around her and the difficult decisions that she makes and the, uh, I guess, like, quote unquote, bad decisions that she makes, um, they're relatable and they absolutely make sense in, in the context of the world that she lives in and the experiences that she's had. And so I think what's so beautiful about that is that she, she represents the many, many indigenous people who, um, who experience immeasurable barriers in their everyday lives, just like trying to get by. Um, I think Dennis did such a good job of, of um, providing a very unconventional hero's journey that's like so relatable for, I think, most Indigenous people. I think we all know Niska on some level. Um, and just like that beautiful character arc of love, getting to return to a community and return to the land and return to family. Like, <laughs> oh, I get emotional just thinking about it. It's, yeah, it's an incredible story. The, the scenes around the, 
the community that's been built up at the end. You know, there's so much that seems to be there that you know, I'd love to understand more. Could you explain how you build that? Because it feels like we've stepped into a real community, and obviously my understanding would be that you've, you've built that on, on actual stories. Is that the case? Well, I think, you know, um, when, like there, what Elmira was talking about, which is that we have experienced so much loss and trauma, but within our communities, you know, our sense of um, power and resistance, you know, comes from a place of love. Hmm. And I wanted to express that love on screen, which is in the community of people that are resisting in spite of what seems like impossible odds. Hmm. And that's also why the genre like offers so much in terms of possibility. It's like, you know, it's a perfect allegory for indigenous experience. Hmm. You know, you think of all these genre tropes, like we're the band of vigilantes up against like the empire. Right. And you know, like colonization really does feel like that. But to me at the heart of the film, it's always about coming back to love hmm. and that when our families have been fractured, what we deserve to have as communities is love between us and receive it. And you can see in Niska's character how she's reluctant to let that in in a way. And mm. that is also a trauma behavior, right. you know, but she deserves to have her home, her community, the land and her family. And I love the way that there's a sense of history with that community that they have reached back to what they can gather through, you know, through the means that they have at the time and what that speaks to now of people that I've read stories at least that are trying to do that now. What kind of journey, what kind of, like I'm wondering in terms of filmmaking, how do you build that kind of journey for characters that we, we kind of get a glimpse of? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I just spent years imagining the world and the characters, you know, Niska, lived in my imagination for years hmm. before um, bringing it to screen. And um, it's crazy when, you know, Almaya came into the room to do the audition, I suddenly just felt, you know, I was just like weeping by the end of her audition because of how much hmm. emotional truth she just brought to the character. And there's a toughness about the character, but also such a vulnerability. You can see the way she's been cracked open the and trauma I think, it yes. really feels like trauma that you're you're portraying and yet she is you know so determined you know to find a way through um but i think you know the richness of everything is you know the richness of everything in our communities hmm. and it's like there's a spirit there and there's a joy and laughter and so even though we're in this dystopian world it was really important to find some of those moments because i think it's our humor is a part of survival and again always coming back to love hmm. well you know speaking about brooklyn who is such a phenomenal co-star in this for both of you what's it like working with her because she is just such a bright point in this film she is incredible. She's a bright, young, shining star. And she had to carry, along with Elmaya, the movie on her shoulders, which is incredible for a 13-year-old who had a little bit of experience. But we looked all over North America for this role. We probably saw 300 kids for the role wow. of Wasis. And she was brought in, actually, for another role. And as soon as I saw her, I could just feel that spark mm. and um, what she was able to do, and especially in pinnacle scenes, you mm. know, where they're very emotional, I was absolutely blown away by what she was able to do um, as a 13 year old girl. Her talent is just immense. Yeah. What did you think of working with her? <laughs> obviously, obviously that sums up a lot, but I'm curious, you know, working beside her. Oh, Wonderful. I mean, she's, she is so smart and so talented and so brave. Um, it was an honor to work with her and, and to watch her work. Uh, she is wise beyond her years and, and so articulate. Like she understands all of the concepts that, that, that Dennis 
worked into this story. She un understands them on, on an intellectual level, on an emotional level, mm. and on a spiritual level. And when you hear her talk about the film and, and the core themes of the film, she's just so deeply articulate. Like, it's it's hard to believe it's coming from a person her age. Mm. Um, <clears throat> and it just gives me a lot of hope for the future, just knowing that she is one of many Indigenous youth who, who are just so smart and mm. So motivated to 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 continue building a better world for for our people, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, she's just like such a bright young star. <laughs> well, for both of you, my last question is really, you know, what comes next? Because I, I'm sure at this point things are getting a little easier making films. What, you know, what are you working on now, or even just thinking about maybe? Yeah, I'm developing <laughs> some of uh, things that I want to stories about Northern Saskatchewan that I want to tell. One's a period piece. I also just shot a Netflix thriller um, yes. called Ivy with Elise Braga, who was an amazing actor. But, um, you know, we've, we're arriving at kind of a moment where all of a sudden there's, it feels like there's an incredible wave of indigenous work, but this has really been years and decades in the making and, you know, many, Indigenous filmmakers in the first wave have like opened doors mm. that we never thought were possible. So, you know, us getting here and to this moment has really been a testament to the work of so many people. Um, so it feels really incredible to feel a part of that movement, which is something that is bigger than any one of us. Amazing. Well said. Well, thank you both very much for the time. I really appreciate it. Thank you.